Hey, what's going on, Who That Nation? Welcome to another edition of the State of the Saints podcast, where we talk New Orleans Saints. My name is TJ Jones. Thanks for checking out the podcast. I really do appreciate it. On this edition, we're going to be talking a little bit about Michael Thomas's contract. I'll give you an update on that. Um, and also, we're going to be talking about a former New Orleans Saint who is trying out for the XFL. But first, we got to talk about Drew Brees. Now, Drew Brees, uh, we all know, is a, a record maker and a record breaker. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> I mean, it's, it's not much that uh, Drew Brees has not done in the National Football League. All-time leading passer, all-time leading in completion, Super Bowl MVP, two-time offensive uh, player of the year. I mean, Drew Brees has done it all. It's, it's safe to say that when he retires after five years, he will be in the Hall of Fame. There is a bus waiting for him in Canton, Ohio. Not an actual bus, but a bus with his face. <laughs> but um, Drew Brees has a new honor. And um, according to uh, NFL.com, um, uh, Drew Brees is ranked number two all time in cornerstone players. Um, that's right. He is ranked number two all time in cornerstone players. Now, um, for those that don't know what that means, that means that Drew Brees is the most recognizable athlete for a team. OK, so it, it's like if you think about Chicago Bears, the first name you'll probably think of is Walter Payton or Dick Buckets. Or you'll think about Mike Singletary, 85 Bears. If you think about the Baltimore Ravens, the first name you would think of is Ray Lewis and the New England Patriots, the first name. It's hard to say that he should be number one. I, I'm, I'm going to just be honest with you. As much as I love Drew Brees, and I know a lot of people for the last couple of weeks think that I don't like Drew Brees. I don't know what gave you that idea. I mean, I'm just a realist. I mean, I, I hate when people just, you know, drink the Kool-Aid of a team and don't want to look at people objectively. I mean, I love Drew Brees. I love what he has done for this organization. I do feel that number two is the right place for him. And I say that because it's hard uh, for me to say that he should be number one looking at all of the things that Tom Brady has done for the New England Patriots. I mean, we can hate the Patriots all day. We can call them cheaters, which they are. We can call them manipulators, which they are. But you have to call them champions. I mean, Tom Brady has won the Super Bowl six times. He has had nine appearances in the Super Bowl. And to me, Bill Belichick will go down to history as the greatest a coach in NFL history. Um, I will go out and say that I feel like the Lombardi trophy needs to be changed to the Belichick trophy, or they need to get some kind of trophy in the name of Bill Belichick once he hangs it up. But Drew Brees is in the right place at number two, because I don't feel like there's no other player that means as much to an organization and to a region and to a city as Drew Brees. Drew Brees is a player who came in 2006 and nobody knew what they were going to get. I mean, he was coming off of a shoulder surgery, and there was a lot of uncertainty about him. And, um, you know, there was a lot of uncertainty across this country. The one thing that brought us together was the New Orleans Saints. And in 2006, when they went 10-6, and six, and they went all the way to the NFC Championship game, they lost to the Chicago Bears. But it was just something about that season, man, a bunch of – basically cast offs. I mean, former Dallas Cowboy players, unrestricted free agents. I mean, a seventh round pick named Marcus Colston. I mean, Reggie Bush, you know, coming out of USC, former Heisman Trophy winner. I mean, these guys were put together and they made a magical run. And I can just remember Drew Brees throwing the ball all over the place. And we knew in 2006 that we had something special. And then a couple of years later, and we used to joke around, you know, like, you know, the Saints song, Saints go all the way, Saints go all the way, oh, I believe. Then we always hit a psych at the end. I believe, psych, because we never thought we would see this. We never thought that we would see the New Orleans Saints in the Super Bowl, but it happened. And you have to say that it was because of Drew Brees. Drew Brees, to me, is the greatest quarterback that the New Orleans Saints ever had. I wasn't old enough to appreciate the greatness of Archie Manning. Of course, we know Archie played on some sorry teams. When he was with the Saints, I mean, he means a lot, but I think it's safe to say that he has surpassed Archie Manning as far as being a great quarterback because Drew Brees means so much to the city. I really feel like if Drew Brees wanted to go into politics and Drew Brees said he was running for mayor tomorrow, he'll win in a landslide because that's how much Drew Brees means to the city. I mean, they put all their hopes and dreams every single season on number nine. 
And um, congratulations to him because I couldn't think of a better quarterback and a better human being to deserve that honor. Um, they're going to be some great Saints players in the future to me. Um, you know, Alvin Kamara, Michael Thomas, Marshawn Lattimore, Cameron Jordan, guys I feel like to me are going to be mainstays with the New Orleans Saints organization. But there's nobody going to be like number nine. I mean, there, there is only one Drew Brees, and there's nobody like him. So congratulations to him being ranked number two as a cornerstone player in the National Football League. We move forward to uh, Haloe Kakaha. And we all know who that is. If you don't know, he was drafted by the New Orleans Saints back in 2015. He was a second-round pick. Well, the former linebacker is going to try to try out for an XFL team. And for those that don't know what the XFL team, that is the Extreme Football League that is running and operated by Vince McMahon. That's right, the WWE chairman, CEO of World Wrestling Entertainment. So it's good to see uh, Kakaha still trying to play football, still trying to get uh, on the field. Uh, you know, I, I think that he was one of those guys that had a lot of promise. I mean, it all started back at the University of Washington, man. I think going into his final season, he led the nation in sacks. But one thing that always kind of plagued him was the fact he was always injured. I think he tore his ACL, I think his junior year of college. And then his senior year, he had that breakout year. And when he went to the Saints, I mean, he had a couple flashes. I mean, I can remember, you know, him stripping a ball a couple times. Um, you know, causing some havoc, getting a few sacks. He even gained a little weight to be a part of the Saints NASCAR package where he rushes the quarterback, but he just could never stay healthy, man. He could never stay healthy, and the Saints couldn't trust him. And we all know that the number one thing you have to have in the National Football League is availability. Teams have to count on you to be on the football field, and he just could not do it. I didn't think that he was a bad player. I think when he played, he played really well. But the problem was he spent so much time in, in, you know, rehab, you know, trying to rehab his leg and trying to get back on the field. He, he kind of lost his spot, man. The Saints kind of went in a different direction. They started to get guys, you know, that can pass rush like Trey Hendrickson, you know, guys like that that can go off the edge. And he just kind of got lost in the shuffle. So hopefully he can go to the XFL and, and, and continue to play and maybe play his way back into the league. I mean, he's not – that old i think he's maybe like 26 or 27 years old so you have a good season with the F xfl um i think the xfl uh, is going to be on television you might get a little bit exposure if you go out there and you know make some noise maybe teams will look at you and possibly you can get back in the national football league before it's too late but i'm rooting for kakaha i think that he's a good player i think that he has what it takes i think that um he's one of those guys that really tries hard he gives 110 percent but unfortunately, you know, he just was uh, plagued by the injury bug. So hopefully he can go out there and make some plays in the XFL. And finally, we got to talk about Michael Thomas. Um, there's still no word on Michael Thomas's contract, which I don't know what's going on. But it, it just seems like to me that you have wide receivers waiting for the, the other wide receiver to get paid. I don't know if Amari Cooper is waiting on Michael Thomas to get paid. I don't know if Michael Thomas is waiting on Amari Cooper to get paid. I don't know if they're looking at A.J. Green out there in Cincinnati or Julio Jones in Atlanta. But somebody need to do something because, to be honest with you, man, I'm a little bit nervous about this because I don't see what the problem is. I feel like uh, if Michael Thomas is asking for uh, $22 million a year, he earned it. And I will continue to say that. And I've heard so many people's uh, opinions about uh, Michael Thomas. Oh, he's a wide receiver. It's a dependable position. Um, if, if Drew Brees retire, I mean, it's just going to be a waste of money. Look, man, all I'm saying is this. If a guy goes out and he produces, if he goes out and he plays to the best of his ability, if he goes out there, lays it all on the line, gives it his all week after week after week, he deserves to get paid. And all I'm saying to you is put yourself in his shoes. I mean, if you go to work each and every day, you're the first one there, last one to leave. You lay it all on the line each and every day. Every day you put 110% into what you do. When that year is up and it's time for what they call a merit increase or a raise, really what you are supposed to do on the field, you need to get paid. And this man deserves to get paid. And he deserves to be the highest paid wide receiver. I have been putting up numbers week after week on Facebook.com. Search the State of the Saints podcast. I mean, I've been putting up numbers. And if you look at some of those numbers, according to Pro 
football focus, you will see that Michael Thomas has led in so many statistical categories over some of the top receivers in the National Football League. I mean, if you talk to any of the aficionados, they'll tell you that Antonio Brown is the best wide receiver in the National Football League. But if you were to ask one of those aficionados who led the league in most uh, catches without drops, they probably couldn't tell you it was Michael Thomas. If you probably ask them who holds the record for most catches in their first three seasons, they probably couldn't tell you Michael Thomas. But that's what Michael Thomas did. And Michael Thomas deserves to get paid. So I don't know what's taking so long, but somebody need to go ahead and get the ball rolling because training camp is just around the corner. And to be honest with you, I would not blame Michael Thomas if he doesn't show up for training camp because I, I don't want to see that man risk it all. He go out there, you know, come up limp, and the next thing you know, the Saints don't want to pay him because he's injured. So I wouldn't blame him. And I know that's not the most popular thing to say. And I know somebody like, oh, man, you don't want to do that. It's all about camaraderie and team. But, hey, man, when you're getting paid uh, based on your body uh, performing at a high level, you don't want to go out there and risk it all, especially when the team has not showed you that you matter to them. But those are the stories from the New Orleans Saints. I would like to hear from you. What do you think about Drew Brees ranked number two as a cornerstone player? What do you think about Kakaha going to the XFL? And what do you think about Michael Thomas still not getting a big-time contract? Comment down below, like, share, and comment. This has been the State of the Saints podcast. I'm TJ Jones. Previous episodes are available on iTunes, Spotify, and iHeartRadio.com. Till next time. All I have to say is...